Where do the Georgia Bulldogs sit with their top remaining targets in the 2025 class? If you've totally forgot about it, which I totally understand, signing day is next week, right? It's not in the middle towards the end of December. It is this week, right when Georgia is trying to prepare for the SEC title game. A lot going on. Right now, they have the number one class in the country. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down you know, who are their top remaining targets? Who might they sign on signing day? Um, is there someone who might be close to pulling the trigger around Thanksgiving? I'm making this video on Tuesday. So um, you're obviously watching this on Thanksgiving, I believe. So if you are watching this on Thanksgiving, just know I love you. I love you. I know if you're trying to get away from family for a little bit and you're watching this video to get the latest on Georgia Bulldog recruiting, yeah, I love you. I love you. Hope you're having a great day, but I really am glad you're watching. And because you're watching, I'm going to give you an insider note on a five-star elite prospect committed elsewhere that one source told me this week, I think he is silently committed to Georgia. I'm going to talk about him in just a second. But the first guy that I do feel like I need to talk about quickly is uh, an in-state three-star offensive lineman, Dennis Uza Chokwu, he is, if I said that right, he is a promising offensive tackle, right tackle, 6'6", 285, uh, who recently earned a Georgia offer. He was committed to Georgia State. He's one of the fastest rising prospects in the state. Um, has just been playing the offensive line for two years. He's out of Peachtree Ridge um, as a junior at Discovery. He was all promise, all potential, big kid, still learning the game. But he has taken massive steps forward at Petrie Ridge. Just a three-star. His ranking is not going to, you know, excite a lot of Georgia fans. Uh, and that's okay. It, it doesn't matter because Stacey Searles and the Dogs know his potential. He's not going to be playing anytime soon, you know, if Georgia is the pick. Right now, you know, everything I'm hearing behind the scenes and putting the pieces together, it looks like this kid, um, you know, will be uh, signing with Georgia, and it could be around Thanksgiving. So by the time you're watching this, this young man could be committed to the dogs. Uh, and again, he is the number 60 prospect in Georgia, which is fair. He's the number 28 offensive tackle, number 448 overall. But one outlet has him uh, in the top 200 overall, in the top 25 in Georgia. So again, you turn on the tape, this guy's mauling dudes, mauling dudes. He moves really well in the open field, and the run game can um, you know, kind of – uh, turn and find linebackers at the second level, and he's a promising pass protector as well. So this is an offensive lineman to keep an eye on. Um, but I want to talk about some five stars, okay? Justice Terry. Everyone wants to know about Justice Terry. He uh, took a visit to Auburn over the weekend, which I know Georgia fans, that might get them a little worried. I'm still hearing that Georgia is the favorite to land him. Again, if you're kind of New to this recruitment, if you only follow recruiting around signing day, this is an elite five-star defender from uh, you know rural Georgia, Manchester High School, number two defensive line prospect in the country. He's the number nine overall prospect in the country. Uh, 6'6", 275. Dude was built in a lab. Um, plays with max effort, though. He knows football, right? Not only is he big, strong, fast, powerful, but he... He's technically sound. Um, he does the fundamentals the right way, plays with good leverage, hand placement, um, gets after the quarterback, but can chase down the running back too. He, I mean, he's not round. I mean, this guy is built well, and it doesn't look like he's 275. He's lean. looks like he can still continue to add weight, but, you know, he works hard on his craft. He's, uh, again, a technician, uh, plays the game. He's not just a big athlete with muscle, right? I mean, he is a football player who knows what he's doing. And I think Georgia will land him uh, and him playing next to Elijah Griffin, the number one defensive line prospect in the country they've had uh, on board. A promising J.J. Han, who's new to football, too. Uh, has only been playing a couple of years. He plays out in California. The staff thinks he's got a high potential. And all those edge guys, you know, attacking the quarterback, you put Justice Terry in the middle with those two. Scary, scary thought. And, and really, this is going to be a truly elite defensive line haul if everything I'm hearing you know, comes to fruition and they land Justice Terry around signing day. So I'm not sure he's a Thanksgiving commitment uh, like the three star offensive tackle that I just talked about, who, again, could be on the commit list by the time you're watching this. Justice Terry, I think, is more of a signing day guy, but I like George's chances with him. Um, now, if they want to take another defensive lineman in this class, another interior guy, Jeremiah McLeod, a current Florida commitment, plays out of Lee County, this is his first year playing in the state of Georgia. So if, if that name doesn't ring any bells for you, 
Um, that's probably why. He was from Florida. He played at Lee County. 6'3", 285. Big kind of, you know, shoulders on him. He moves really well, really uh, performed in the camp circuit. He's having a really strong senior year. Number 38 defensive lineman, number 425 overall. And it, he's a good player, but again, a lot of these rankings on some of these guys that they're trying to add late, it's not going to excite a lot of Georgia fans, but you got to remember, there's going to be less walk-ons and more scholarship players. So they're going to hit, you know, around that 30 mark, maybe a little more. So with a guy like Jeremiah McLeod, it's, there's not a whole lot of risk and a lot of reward. And same with this next guy that I'm going to talk about in a second, who's a quarterback. They're looking to add another quarterback in this class. And this kid, in my opinion, not a lot of risk, high reward. Uh, but Jeremiah McLeod is a current Florida commitment, took an official visit to Georgia not too long ago. They are starting to push for his commitment, it feels like. And uh, I don't think he's just a plan B option. If they don't land Justice Terry, I think he's a guy that they could – continue to add. Um, they want depth on the defensive line. And in an era where if you're not playing, you can hit the portal just all willy nilly, you know, whenever it opens up year after year, you do want to add a lot of guys because there will be some attrition and not all of these guys are going to end up at Georgia at the end of their college careers. That's just it. So you want to bring in guys and have the cream rise to the top. Um, so he's another three-star in-state guy to keep an eye on that they might add late. But I want to talk about this young man real quick. Uh, Hezekiah Melinder. Buddy, I hope I nailed that for you. I probably didn't, and I'm sorry. He is a quarterback by nearby Clark County. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, Clark County in Athens. What am I talking about? Um, but he's new to Georgia. He's from Arizona, playing in his first and only season in the, the state of Georgia. He's committed to Boise State, 6'3", 195, dual threat. Okay, dual threat. If you look at his ranking, it's going to disgust you. As a Georgia fan, um, it, again, if you follow recruiting, you're used to Georgia signing number one class, number one class, number one class consistently, right? They could do it again here. So you look at where this kid's ranked, and you're going to want to throw up, but it doesn't matter. He's ranked as the number 100 quarterback prospect in the country, like number 1,700 overall. It's an ugly ranking, but hey, the guy who just led Georgia to two national championships was ranked lower than that, okay? And this kid, he can run. And uh, the Georgia staff likes him enough to where they said, you know, we feel comfortable that we want to add another quarterback. They like Ryan Montgomery, okay? Um, but, again, quarterbacks, if they're not playing, can bounce. And Ryan Montgomery is dealing with the, the knee injury, so I'm not sure if he'll even be ready for the spring. They need to add depth. And uh, this is a kid with size and a promising arm. He didn't light it up through the air this year. Um, 96 for 159, just 60% for 1,800 yards. This is the kicker, though. 25 touchdowns, one interception. Again, he threw the ball 159 times, and he only threw one interception. That is, uh, you got to like that. He also ran for over 600 yards and six touchdowns. So you got to like that, too. So if you're Mike Bobo, this is a talented kid who, you know, Another Power Five, power, uh, yeah, Power Five school said, "Hey, you're good enough to play at us at Boise State. Um, the, the kid's got some talent. They're going to bring him in. Low risk, high reward. If this kid turns out and uh, can improve and develop as a passer, he's got uh, he's mobile enough to make plays with his legs. Bring size, a, a raw but talented arm. We'll see. Maybe he turns into something. Uh, but if not, he transfers. You know, it's." No big deal, right? They're not putting all their eggs in this this basket here, but he is a, a promising talent that could turn into a serviceable backup. Now, here's the five-star that I mentioned earlier in this video. So DJ Pickett is a five-star cornerback, elite, elite prospect, number 10 player in the country, number two cornerback, plays both ways for a school down in Florida, 6'4", 180, committed to LSU. And I got a call uh, about him this week. And uh from a, a source down uh, by in Florida covering the Gators. And he said, Matt, keep an eye on DJ Pickett. Now, I knew there was some recent interest. I got a great shot of him um, pregame prior to the Tennessee game. So he was in Athens for that big night game when Georgia beat Tennessee. And I think that kind of resonated and stuck with him a little bit. And they lost Shamari Earl, who I think is an elite cornerback, to Michigan, right? So they're, they, Georgia's got to find another one. They got to find an elite cornerback. Uh, to replace the one that flipped to Michigan. And so I think they're going to go all in on the DJ Pickett, um, you know, uh, recruitment, right? There was some interest early on, but nothing ever materialized. I think Florida was in the mix. He ended up committing to LSU, but back in Athens for that game, 
And again, this source said, hey, I think he could be a silent commitment. Now, that's a big deal, but it's not everything. A silent commitment from one kid may mean a lot. A silent commitment from another kid may not mean nothing at all, right? Every kid's different and everyone's word can be different as well. So I'm not saying this kid is flipping to Georgia. I'm saying I think there's a better chance of it happening than I did 24 hours ago after hearing that phone call. So just a guy to keep an eye on, right? So we'll see a lot of this could come down to NIL and, and funds and whatever this kid's looking for. But Georgia needs an elite cornerback in this class. They've got some good ones. No doubt about that. They've got some good ones. Um, they don't have an Ellis Robinson type and they got to hold on to Ellis Robinson. So, I mean, maybe we'll see him more against Tech and um, down the stretch. But DJ Pickett is elite. And he's committed to LSU, kind of a program going, you know, not in the right direction. Just a guy to keep an eye on. Okay, DJ Pickett, five-star from Florida. Kid, to, kid to just keep an eye on this week. All right, thanks for watching. You can read all about this and more over on Dog Post. Thanks for watching. Hope y'all are having an amazing Thanksgiving with your family. And I really appreciate y'all watching. Thanks, and I'll see you over on the website.